Marketing Part 3. All right, the next part of this game deals with what they call it the spine, the very guts of the 3.5 rules. The mechanisms and the mechanics that actually create the core of 3.5. And this product goes into more detail and analysis and breakdown of the actual core rules of 3.5 than I have ever seen anywhere else. I mean pages of information and charts breaking down how your hit probabilities as you go up in level change versus the monsters and their ability to hit you and it's incredibly useful information. I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do with this information but the amount of work that went into this is staggering and I appreciate that they did this. They did an incredibly excellent job with this and I'm glad they did it. Okay, now we're going to get into the, some of the class stuff here. And the Barbarian didn't change a lot. They've given it they have some extra feats like the Fighter has, not as many, but it gets extra feats from an appropriate kind of list of feats for a Barbarian. And they've changed the um, uh, Rage feat so that you have a Rage a class ability, so you have a choice of you being a Whirling Frenzy type of Berserker or a hardy rage type of berserker, and the hardy rage type of berserker is kind of the classic berserker rage that the, that the barbarian gets. While the whirling frenzy, you get strength and a bonus to your um, saving throws and more attacks, and you take a penalty to your armor class. And I like this option because I've never liked having a con bonus in a rage because it gives you a gives you a Phantom hit points. I don't like phantom hit points. I think they're a bad mechanic. Again, more stuff I gotta track. I don't want to be tracking phantom hit points, so I don't approve of that. Um, okay, I gotta tell you right now, they did a whole bunch of stuff for the bard. I don't like bards. I They're boring. I don't think they're good for jacks of all trades. I despise the magical, uh, the musical abilities they have. If They just bore me to tears. So, this could be great bard stuff. I don't know. If you want to play a jack of all trades in my book, you can play a factotum from the complete adventure or the either dungeonscape. Um, the cleric. Um, they've made a few changes to the cleric. Why they didn't take away his heavy, ar heavy armor frequency like they did in Pathfinder, I don't know. I've always thought it was overkill, and I know that I would be using Pathfinder's uh, mechanism for that. And again, as I said, I don't like the turn on dead mechanism that the core of rules use. I don't like the one they've got here. I prefer ones that actually harm undead. Um, now the druid, again, the druid lost their animal companion. But to compensate for this, they have upped their ability to the, the emphasis on wild empathy. And druids can speak with animals at will. So you can essentially talk to any animal you encounter, work your magic on them as far as wild empathy is concerned, and convince them to come with you. So you become the party face to the animal kingdom. I like this. It means I'm not having to take care of, of Animal Canyon all the time. When I need them, it's there and I play it. Now, the animal bookkeeping, I don't know if it's going to change. But you're not going to have the animal companions getting as strong so the ones you pick up along the way are not going to be as tough. So there's going to be less of um, this big hulking monster with you that used to be an animal at one point in the past, but you've buffed it so much because you, you're an your animal companion. There's less of that because it doesn't exist. They've also really changed Wild Shape. Wild Shape essentially becomes Astral Construct. You're taking a bunch of abilities, putting them onto yourself, in the form of an animal. So even though you're turning into an animal, you're really adding abilities, bonuses to, to, to physical stats, abilities like flying or burrowing or swimming or some kind of combat about like a, a bite or a claw claw bite kind of thing. And when you're taking the form of an animal, you pass from human or your player character race into the animal and you stop in the middle and you can be a hybrid wear form. And it's a temporary. For example, if you're a second level druid, you can only afford be in this hybrid form for two rounds, and then you go into animal form. You can also go from in regular animal form at will without the hybrid step if you choose. I like this option. Um, I think it's interesting. You'll have to excuse my cat for making noise next to me. Um, I think this is a cool option. Um, I still think I prefer how Pathfinder handles it, or 
how uh, it, the wild shape ability in the player's handbook 2 handles it, as I've reviewed that in the past. Um, but getting rid of the animal companion, I don't think is a bad thing at all. Now, the fighters, this is something I really happen to like. They have something in here, um, which they call the punishing strike. Essentially, is anybody tries to sneak past you, and you can strike them with an uh, attack of opportunity, you get a bonus to damage, just like a rogue does. So somebody tries to get past you, they don't pull off their tumble or whatever it is, to, so you don't hit them, you nail them, you really hit them hard. This makes perfect sense. Fighters are supposed to be the tactical geniuses on the battlefield. They should be able to take advantage of someone else's lapse and reason and make them pay for it. I really like this ability. They also have an ability which is um, expert weapons proficiency. Now you pick these up, multiples of these, and as you pick them up, you can add abilities to your weapon. For example, you can increase the damage dice. You can increase the uh, multiplier for critical hits. You can increase the range for critical hits. Um, you can add other abilities. You can add a disarm ability to when you use your weapon. You can add or you can the weapon becomes light in your hands if it's a one-handed, even though it isn't a normally light one-handed weapon. Uh, and of course, the weapon itself is not being affected at all by this. Your skill with that weapon is so you're getting better and better at the weapon you have choose chosen to um, emphasize. I like this. I think this is even a superior version of the fighter than what Pathfinder did. This right here in my book is. Um, is well worth looking at. I think it's an excellent, excellent adaption to the fighter. Um, they changed the monk slightly, so essentially that when he's striking with the uh, his flurry of blows, he gets uh, a better to hit. Kind of like what they did in Pathfinder. Um, this is a little different here and there. For example, it has more weapons to choose from. They can use all kinds of they can use all spears now as standard weapons, and they can use them as monk weapons, which I think is cool. The long spear is an excellent version of this that was used historically by monks in China. There's no reason I don't think they can use they shouldn't be able to use it here. Um, so I think they did some nice things with the monk, not earth shattering, but but I think it was very flavorful, and I kind of enjoyed how they interpreted it. Um, the paladin, uh, the paladin is not as good as Pathfinder's version. They changed it. They made him different. And I don't think they get as good a job as Pathfinder did, flat out. Uh, I'd go with the Pathfinder and Paladin any day. Path Pathfinder is the only class, only Paladin version I would ever play, which is an endorsement for that class, because they're previous to now. I've always thought they were stupid. Um, Ranger, again, uh, you get, uh, for example, Ranger has half his Ranger level uh, bonus to all survival checks to compensate for the fact that he no longer gets tracked. Bingo, that's how they do it. Um, no Animal Companion, still gets uh, spells. Um, I don't like, again, how they redid the spell system, so uh, I can't really endorse that in the least. The Rogue gets uh, more abilities to have, have to, to ability to use his uh, uh, sneak attack more often. I like that. They did a good job. The other abilities in here, uh, I think they did it better in Pathfinder. Sorry, I'm making that comparison. Sorcerer, bunch of extra feats and stuff, nothing, extra spells and things like that, nothing earth shattering in the least. I really like how Pathfinder handled this. They did an excellent job. Um, and Wizard, some extra feats and, and, and uh, spell abilities, and nothing all that great, in my opinion. Again, Pathfinder did a much better job. Um, so, I'm hoping that I can get this uh, done with one more video, because there are still a few things I want to cover. Thank you.